disaster seemed to rage around us. The destructive results of mankind's pride. But Jesus is our cornerstone. The foundation on which we build our faith is the anchor. He's the one we cling to when the tempest rages around us. He provides the hope, the compass, the sure-footedness that we so desperately need right now. When we place our trust in him, he studies us. So much so that we are surprised by joy, peace, and hope in the storm. Therefore, this is what the sovereign Lord says. Look, I am placing a foundation stone, a firm and tested stone. It is a precious cornerstone that is safe to build on. Whoever believes need never be shaken. Would you please stand with us?
too far away. <laughs> Bom dia. Welcome on this Memorial Day weekend. It's so good to see all of you here this morning. I want to share just some quick announcements with you. And the first is don't forget our very special time uh, next week in the morning service. Uh, we'll be having Reverend Ozil with us. And uh, he is... Uh, uh, he is the uh, academic dean of the seminary in Cape Verde. And uh, uh, Dr. Oziel is, um, is a very, very gifted individual who's going to be sharing with us the word of God in the morning service. And then we will have our potluck downstairs and he's going to be sharing with us about the seminary and the ministry there. So, uh, Number one, we want you all to come. And number two, um, you need to bring something food-wise, right? It's not a potluck without the pots, so, uh, <laughs> so bring something uh, and come and join us. And then uh, just to um, kind of give you a heads up awareness, we will be taking a second offering next Sunday. We'll have our regular offering, but we'll be taking a second offering at the end of the service uh, for Dr. Oziel and his ministry, so uh, make you aware of that for next week. And then uh, we want to encourage those of you who have not yet gotten your pictures taken for our new directory to, um, to get your pictures taken right out in the lobby after the service um, so that we can have you a part of the directory, right? Uh, we're not going to use the pictures to blackmail you or anything, right? Um, we're not uh, putting together a pinup calendar kind of a thing, okay? It is so that um, we can better know each other, right? And so that we can better pray for each other. Um, we want to put this directory together. So please, if you have not yet... Um, Join us out in the lobby after the service and get your picture taken uh, so that we could have just a, a wonderful tool um, of a directory to use together. Well, let's invite our ushers to come forward to receive our morning offering as we give to the Lord this morning. Now let's pray. Father God, thank you for the opportunity to give. It is our joy, our pleasure, Father, to give to you, for you have done so much for us and blessed us in so many ways. So we offer these gifts to you, O oh God, in worship and in praise. Bless those who give this morning and use these, Lord, to touch lives, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. We are a nation under God. And I believe God intended for us to be free. We must realize that no arsenal or no weapon in the arsenals of the world is so formidable as the will and moral courage of free men and women. The price for this freedom at times has been high, but we have never been unwilling to pay that price. Those who say that we're in a time when there are no heroes they just don't know where to look. The sloping hills of Arlington National Cemetery with its row upon row of simple white markers bearing crosses or stars of David. Their lives ended in places called Bellow Wood, the Argonne, Omaha Beach, Salerno, and halfway around the world on Guadalcanal, Tarawa, Porkchop Hill, the Chosin Reservoir, and in a hundred rice paddies and jungles of a place called Vietnam. They add up to only a tiny fraction of the price that has been paid for our freedom.
Our altar is open at this time for a time of prayer. You're welcome to make your way up forward if you like during this song. Please stand with us. Holy Spirit, you know that uh, a dear member of our church passed away this morning at uh, one. Ruth Rendez is uh, with her Savior this morning. And I was speaking with the family this morning and told them that our church family would be lifting them up in prayer today as in that loss of uh, and so we want to lift them to the Lord. And uh, details for memorial service will uh, be coming out this week. Uh, we'll let you know um, about that and pass word along to you. Well, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father God, we thank you for the opportunity to come to you in prayer. For Lord, we desperately need you. There's so much that we face, oh God, that we need the precious power of your Holy Spirit to rain down upon us. So we do echo those words from the song. 
rain down, oh God, with your precious Holy Spirit. Revive our hearts. Strengthen us, Lord. God, we, we pause this morning and pray for all those who have lost loved ones in military service. God, we don't want to let this weekend go by just as a, a holiday or a time to have a barbecue, but we want to be so thankful, oh God, for those men and women who so courageously laid down their lives that we might be able to worship here this morning. So we pray for all those families today, oh God. Encourage, strengthen them, bring peace, Lord. We thank you for the privilege of living in this free land. And oh God, we just pray that you would bless America, that you would guide us, oh God, and help us to remain true to you. We pray this morning, oh God, for Renda's family, Lord, and Lord, the, the loss of Ruth. And Lord God, we know that she was a faithful servant of you. So there is no doubt in our minds this morning that she is with her Savior. That she is without pain today. And we thank you for that, O oh God. We thank you that for her joyous coming home. But Lord, it leaves a hole within our hearts. So we pray, oh God, your comfort and your peace for the family and for all those who are grieving this morning. Oh God, would you just surround them with your love and care? Would you hold them in your arms, oh God? And Lord, we just pray. We pray this morning for Richard, Lord. And God, would you just give him such a peace that surpasses all understanding today. Be close to him, Father. Lord, we pray for the needs in our congregation. Those here, Father, who are pouring their hearts out to you during this prayer time. God, would you meet their needs? Would you touch? Would you encourage? God, surround them with your care. We thank you. You have been faithful and you are faithful, oh God. And we just lift up each one to you this morning. Lord, we pray for your continued presence as we open up your word this morning, Father. Teach us, show us, guide us, oh God. And help us, Lord, to be the hands and feet of Jesus right here in our area. To touch lives, oh God. Lord, you are good. You are gracious, compassionate. Thank you, oh God. We give you glory and honor and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated.
say, she is the better part of this pastoral team. She really is, right? Um, and, and I want to acknowledge that. In fact, it's, it's, it's kind of funny. Um, Karen's family has been, well, in this country from the very beginning. In fact, some of her relatives fought in the Revolutionary War. And, and they've been a part of the Church of the Nazarene since this beginning. And I, I often, when I'm at denominational things, I don't introduce myself as Pastor Dave. I say, I'm, I'm the husband of Karen, right? <laughs> Because they know me better than that way. <laughs> but she is truly a blessing. Um, and I thank you, Karen, and um, for all that you do and, and want to tell you that I love you this morning. I do want to also thank Raquel Farrell, our church secretary. I'm amazed at the energy and effort she puts into this church and the love that she has for all of you and the care that she gives to all of you. I am constantly challenged spiritually by her passionate love for God and her care for other people. So thank you, Raquel, for, for being there for us. And, and of course, I want to thank uh, Pastor Delgado for, um, for your support and your ministry. You bridge the gap between cultures like no one I've ever seen. It is just so amazing. And uh, people all the time comment to me and say they just feel so comfortable in your presence, so welcome, so encouraged. And so thank you, uh, Pastor Delgado, for your ministry uh, here. And, and, and it, is, it is a joy to have you a part of this church. It is God's gift to this church, right? So... So, obligado to you, and, and if I just swore at you, sorry. Um, no. <laughs> you know, so that's, you know. Um, and I also want to thank each of you. You bring such joy to my life. It is fun and exciting to minister to you and to minister with you. Thank you for your patience with my poorly spoken Portuguese. Um, thank you for the food and the gifts and the prayers that just make my day. I absolutely love being a part of Bethany Church. And God has brought us together. And it is, it's, it's, just, it's just fun, right? It's just enjoyable. And you do bring joy to my life, so thank you. Um, I echo the words of Philemon chapter 1, verse 4, which says, I always thank God as I remember you in my prayers. So thank you, church. God is so faithful and has been at work in incredible ways this past year. And I, often I'm amazed at what takes place. And I, I, I find myself often praying, and I told you a little bit about this last week, but I often find myself praying. Uh, Praying, God, please help me not to mess up what you are doing, right? And help me not to get in the way, God, of what you are doing. It's amazing what God is doing. And here are some of the numbers that I reported to the denomination for you. They're, by the way, they're, it's all in this book. If you didn't pick one up, uh, get one after church. And we have both... Um, both in English and, and thanks to Raquel, we have it in Portuguese. Um, so um, pick up your copy and that will give you all the, the numbers. Um, if you can't see them up there, but um, we average 76 uh, for morning worship attendance this past year. The year before, we averaged 62. So God has increased, right? Small groups in Sunday school, we averaged 35. The year before, we averaged 20. So God has increased. We had one regular prayer meeting, which we averaged eight. And last year, we averaged six. So God's increasing. In children's church, we averaged 11. Last year, we put down zero because we were just getting started. So God has tremendously blessed in that area. Your total giving, as you heard last week, was 
$206,929. The year before, it was $166,000. So you have been generous, and God has blessed. Thank you for your generosity. Thank you for your faithfulness in giving. Now, before you think that we're rich, okay, <laughs> eight thou over $8,000 of that was given for the the overhang roof thing for the um, for the handicap ramp and and uh, if you are um, if, if you're wondering why it isn't there yet because your generosity is tremendous but eight thousand dollars is not even half of what we need for out there so just to let you know um, but thank you and you gave two thousand dollars to the community as I'll talk about in just a few minutes with regard to our anniversary project. So thank you for your faithful giving. The biggest event that happened this past year in the life of our church was, of course, the celebration of our 100 years of ministry. For 100 years, this church has been ministering in Rumford, right? It's amazing. And you've been a church for 80 of those years. Before that, it was a commission. But that is unbelievable. Can I tell you, in this day and age, that's almost unheard of to be in existence for that long. So God has been faithful. We gathered together for a great banquet on a Saturday night, right? Filled with tasty food and great music and the stories from former ministers. The mayor of East Providence was in attendance and he shared how impressed he was by the multicultural flavor of our church and the great stability that this church has had over the years. Do you know COVID wasn't the first pandemic that this church has gone through? So God has been faithful, and we've continued. Two months prior to the banquet in honor of the anniversary, you gave uh, to fund a gift to our community. And at the banquet, we surprised the mayor with a check for $2,000 in support of the Police Explores Youth Program so that they could minister. So your fingerprints have gone out past this church. That is awesome. That is important. Well done, church. Your selfless, generous giving enabled us to go beyond these four walls and impact our community. There was a book about history of the church and a commemorative ornament we created as part of the celebration. Congratulatory greetings were given by several uh, government officials, and you can read about that in your book. I won't take time to go into that, but they're there for you. And we concluded our anniversary with a great worship celebration. Both our general superintendent, Reverend Eugenio Duarte, and our district superintendent, Reverend Ken Stanford, was there and spoke, and they challenged us not to just celebrate God's goodness in the past, but to look forward to what God is going to do the next hundred years, right? And some of you might even be around for that, right? <laughs> Looking at this hundred year anniversary, I first want to pause and thank God for his faithfulness. God has been faithful. He has. And... Things in the world throughout that hundred years have gone up and gone down, but God has been consistent. Right? And he has brought us through. So I want to thank God for, for it. over the past hundred years, many lives have been impacted for the glory of God. Right? And the second thing I want to challenge us about in regards to this 100th anniversary is we need to strive not to be a monument, but a movement. We need to strive not to be 
a monument, but to be a movement. A monument commemorates something that once was alive, but now is dead and gone. Right? Do you know that? That's what a monument does. It looks at the past only, the good old days. A, a movement equips an army of people to go forward and accomplish something. And in this case, the church is to accomplish God's mission. God's mission. In fact, it's Chuck Colson who said, the church isn't an organization, it's an organism. It is moving, it is active, it is doing things. We need to accomplish God's mission. A movement is stationary, it doesn't change. A movement is active and adjust to the effect to be effective, excuse me, in ministry. A monument is polished and looks perfect. A movement often looks a little chaotic and a bit blurry. Are there scuff marks on the walls downstairs because of the children's program? Probably, but that's a good thing because we're ministering to children. We're not to be a monument. We're to be a movement for God. A monument is polished. A movement looks chaotic at times. A monument values itself and its traditions. A movement values people and adds people to the team. 1 Samuel chapter 7 and verse 12 says... This, then Samuel got a big stone. He set it up between Mishpah and Shen. He named it Ebenezer. He said, the Lord has helped us every step of the way. Or other translations say, thus far as the Lord helped us. God has blessed. God has helped us. But you know what? The Israelites They received a great victory in that story from God and wanted to acknowledge it, but then they proceeded forward. They didn't camp out at the memorial. They didn't stay there. They went and were the people of God. And I want to challenge us to be the same thing. We need to thank God. We need to rejoice at what he's done in the past hundred years, and then we need to get going again. We need to move. We need to follow what God is doing. We are a movement of God. We are a people of God. And we need to go forward. There have been many other exciting things that have taken place over the past year, some of which you have heard about in in these other reports that we've been doing. Thank you so much to the church board for their leadership and desire to move with God. Thank you, thank you, thank you to to Jim Carrenti, Pastor Delgado, Nish Santos, Sarah Sosa, and Marcos Diomita for opening up the Word of God to us, for teaching. That is such an important ministry. Thank you for doing that. And no, I don't have a gift for you, but you know... (laughs) And you, know, you got to understand, Karen and you all, you know, that's okay. <laughs> but thank you for teaching and opening up God's word to us and helping us to grow. In addition to their efforts, we had three church, all church studies over the past year, which included adult small group discussions. And we need more people involved in small groups. Folks, that is where spiritual growth happens, right? I mean, I am particularly fond of the pastor that preaches every Sunday. I I think he's a cool guy, right? (laughs) But your spiritual growth comes when you can sit down and open the Word of God and talk and share together and question We need you involved in small groups. More of you. 
so that we can grow, so that we can help each other. The Bible says we're to spur one another on. We can't spur each other on if we're not together. Right? Do it. And we've had some incredible discussions right? on the, the Sunday night groups with these studies. We've had incredible discussions. The, the, um, the morning... Um, the morning Bible study, a Sunday school class in there. I'm sitting in my office and listen. They have incredible discussions. They wrestle with issues. They come to terms with things. Be a part of those things. The, the Wednesday night uh, Portuguese study, I assume they are wrestling with Scripture. Uh, <laughs> they could be talking about the weather and I wouldn't you know. No. No, they, they, they will wrestle with Scripture and they sing praises to God. It's, a, it's a wonderful. Get into a small group. We need it to grow. One of the exciting things that happened this past year is in the children's program. God has been continuing to help us to rebuild after COVID. And we have seen growth both numerically and spiritually in our children. It's been amazing. We had children baptized. And the reason why it's not in my report is because it's actually in the new church year. So next year, if I remember, I'll tell you about the children's baptisms up here. But God is at work in our children's program. And this church in the past year was able to give every child a new Bible. I was so touched to see the kids that Sunday after church clutching their Bibles tightly with big smiles on their faces. You know what? There is no greater scene in the world today than children grasping Scripture and learning about the love of Jesus. That's powerful that's amazing. That will change our culture, right? So it's awesome. The children's program also reached out to our neighborhoods through a fall trunk or treat and, and Easter egg hunt and church. Every one of you knows some child that needs to hear about Jesus. Every one of you does. Every one of you knows a child or a grandchild or a friend or a neighbor, a great-grandchild who needs to hear about Jesus. Be intentional and active in inviting them and bringing them to church. 85% Eighty-five percent of Christians receive Jesus Christ between the ages of four and fourteen. Eighty-five percent. And it goes up even another twelve percent if you talk about teens and twenty-somethings. So if we do not share the gospel message with somebody by the age of twenty, there's a strong possibility they will never receive Jesus Christ. We need to invest in kids. And you need to invite kids, bring them here. I want someday for the children to outnumber the adults here. Wouldn't that be cool, right? We can do that. Our women's ministry this past year hit the ground running with with new Bible study group, a sewing ministry, an encouragement team, an outreach team. And I was so pleased to read on Facebook about a family that was ministered to on their anniversary by our women's ministry. Great job, ladies. That's incredible. Do you know what that does to a pastor's heart? I didn't even know that kind of thing was going on. And I open up Facebook and there it is. That's awesome. Great job, ladies, in ministering to others. It's exciting to see our women getting together and ministering to others. And they even send 
goodies back to the parsonage after their event for the pastor. Now that's a holy moment. <laughs> Our men held their first Bible study breakfast this past year. It was a great time to deepen relationships, study God's word, challenge each other to go deeper. Statistics say that the most spiritually vibrant people in the church are women. So for our men to get together and talk about God's word is a great thing. It's something we need to celebrate. And it is my hope that men will do much more in the year to come. I am looking for a man. Now, don't go from here and saying, our pastor's looking for a man. That's really weird. No. <laughs> Let me finish the sentence. I am looking for a man who will take charge of our men's ministry and help us to move forward. So guys, if you are interested in that, see me. And we can work together to build our men spiritually. The church was privileged in the past year to host the academic dean of the Nazarene Seminary in Cape Verde, Reverend Oziel. And we're going to be able to hear him again next week. We had lunch together and we heard about the works there in Cape Verde Seminary. We also raised funds for the scholarship that Bethany Church sponsors for the seminary and for the ministry and for those students. A year ago at the beginning of the church year, I challenged you with a new vision statement for the Bethany Church. It is rooted in Luke chapter 10, verse 27 which says, love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all of your soul, with all of your strength, and with all of your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. Now, I realized this morning as I was praying in my office and, uh, that uh, this slide doesn't have the rest of the verse on it, and I apologize for that because I was working on the PowerPoint last night during the Celtics game. Uh, <laughs> And after nearly having a heart attack, I, you know. <laughs> but it says, love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all of your soul, with all of your strength, and with all of your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. Love God and love others. That's the key. And from that, created a vision statement for our church. Do you know what the vision statement is? Yell it out if you know it. Okay. Several couple of you, that's good. For the rest of you, you have to stay after class and memorize it. <laughs> it is simply this. Pursuing essential relationships with God, with each other, and with our community. Love God, love others. Pursuing essential relationships with God, with each other, and with our community. And as we move forward into this new church year, we need to seek to further define how that vision will be realized. Vision is a picture from God. But that doesn't put in all the details. Guess what? He wants us to put in all of the how we get there. And so we need to talk, we need to share together about that, right? And to plan and to work so that we are loving God and loving each other with all of our hearts, right? You know what? We are creatures of habit. And the problem with that is old habits tend to get entrenched, or to borrow a phrase, old habits die hard, don't they, right? It's not, and if this is a surprise to you, I'm sorry, but it's not 1950 any longer. We live in a whole different world. 
And we need to meet those challenges in new ways. Not change the message at all, but change the method, the way that we reach those individuals. We need to creatively think together, looking for those new ways, pursuing those essential relationships. And I believe that starts with prayer, connecting with God whose ways and thoughts are much higher than our ways and our thoughts. We currently have one prayer group that meets on Fridays at noon. That is wonderful, but we need more. We need more prayer in this church. Zechariah chapter 4, verse 6 This is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel, not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord Almighty. God will do it, but we need to connect with God. We need more prayer. I know many of you are tired after a long day work, and and you don't want to leave your homes, and others of you have said that nighttime driving is difficult for you. I think we need to start a a once-a-month Zoom prayer meeting, a time when we can pray for the lost, pray for wisdom, and pray for vision, pray for creativity for this church, and pray for the outpouring of God's Spirit. Pray for revival. Cry out to God. We need that, right? We need more of that. And you know what? I think we need to agree together, come together through Zoom, come and pray together right in your home. Right? Isn't that cool? You couldn't invite 80 people to come to your home, right? But we can together pray in this new technological age, seeking God. I believe we've made progress in pursuing our relationship with God. And I have seen hunger for the word increase. I have seen small groups talking about and wrestling with spiritual issues. And, but we, there's always room for more, right? Everyone, as I said before, should be in a small group. Now, if you can't make it to one of the existing small groups, how about starting one in your home? And if you want to, I can help. Because it would be a joy just to have people meeting and talking about Scripture and praying for each other all over the place. I believe we have made progress in pursuing relationships with each other. We have eaten together. We have worked together. We have had fun together. And guess what? There's always room for more. There is, right? We need to get together more. Yes, as a whole church, but also two or three families at a time. Right? What are you doing after church? Have you invited somebody to come join you? We need to work on pursuing relationships together. And let me tell you, The world is harsh. I was talking to somebody the other day about this, and we were talking about, it's difficult out there, right? So guess what? One hour on a Sunday morning is not enough to build you up. You know? You have hours of people attacking and people just demeaning you. We need to get together more. We need to lift each other up. We need to minister to each other, minister to the sick, minister to people in hospitals, minister to the grieving. A grieving person does not just move on, folks. We do, but they don't. There's a hole in their hearts, and that hole is just the size the church can fit in and help. But we need to get together. Acts chapter 2, verses 46 through 47 says this, 
Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. Right? Those who were being saved. Now, there's a key in that passage. First of all, it doesn't say they preached every day and God added to their number. But it says they met together. And God added to their number those who were being saved. Why? People are starving to belong. People are starving for, to be valued. Right? We need to get together more. And guess what? Because I know in your mind you're thinking, but I have such a busy life, pastor. Guess what? Those New Testament Christians, they had families. They had jobs. They had work and chores to do at home. They had every responsibility that we have. And in fact, even more because to them, you know, to us, washing dishes is putting them in the dishwasher. To them... You know, it's going out somewhere to a stream and taking the time to clean everything. What I'm trying to say is we do not have an excuse. We need to meet together. I believe our biggest challenge is we need to improve, improve in the pursuing relationships with our community. Every one of us should be talking about our church often. Do you do that? We need to do that. I'm amazed as a pastor when I, when I go out and, you know, restaurants or whatever, or parks, or Karen and I are walking. I'm amazed whenever somebody just starts talking about their church. I'm thinking, yes, you got it. We need to talk about Bethany more to the people out there. Why? I'm a, I'm a big fan of sci-fi, right? But you know what? People in the world don't have x-ray visions. They can't see what's happening here. So we need to tell them. We need to share together, right, about that. We all need to talk about our church. That stirs interest in others. We need to invite people to come to church. There's a novel concept. We need to invite people to come to church. And you may say, oh, well, I, you know, pastor, way back in 1970, I invited that person to come to church, and they didn't come. We need to keep inviting people to church. It's important. We need to invite people to come to activities that we do. We need more activities. We need to share life together. Right? We need to invite them to food gatherings, invite them to worship services. Do you know 82% of people would come to church if a friend invited them? 82% of people would come if a friend invited them. Only 2% of Christians ever invite someone to church. We can do better. And you may say, well, you know, they're going to say no. Well, you know, if I looked at you and I said, yeah, you ought to come try our church sometime. How many of you are going to show up? No. Invite them. And then invite them to dinner after church. Invite them to an event. Help. Go by their house. Pick them up. Whatever it may be. To get them to come to hear about Jesus. We also need to find ways to impact our community. <clears throat> Losing my voice here because of the, the pollen. Sorry about that. But people don't care who you know or what you know until they know you care about them. Right? What are we going to, min what are we going to do to minister to people to serve our community? Existing is not serving. We need to get out into our community, right? 
And we need to talk about ways in which we can do that. We need, I want to have a dialogue with you. Why have a dialogue with you? Because great ideas come from you. And we need to talk, and we need to try things. Will everything work? No, but guaranteed if we don't try, we will definitely fail. Right? Let's talk. Let's figure out ways to get outside these walls and get into our community. Make a difference. Yes, I was in Boston yesterday with Karen, and we were walking around, and I just naturally... You know, in a curiosity, I, I, I watch people and I listen in on conversations. And one woman I, I heard as I was passing by her, she simply said this, all I want to do is change the world, help our world. And I'm thinking, wow, how many people out there, people that don't know Christ, are saying, I just want, I want to change our world. I want to do something, right? Oh, we can come alongside them, and we can impact our community, and at the same time, share Jesus with them. Right? We need to do that. Let's talk. Let's dream together. God calls us to go make disciples. That begins when we care about our community, when we help our community, when we serve. John chapter 13, verse 15 says, I have set for you an example that you should do as I have done for you. Jesus washed their feet. You know, I've never had a foot washing ceremony in church. Why? Because I would quickly be looking for another pastoral position, right? <laughs> But if Jesus were willing to get his hands dirty to serve, what about us? We need to get out there. There are lives to be changed. There are people that can be fed. There are streets that need to be cleaned up. There are all kinds of things we can serve people. The Bethany Church is placed here for a reason. And here's a shock for you. That reason is not so that people can come here and get help. It's for us to go out and help. Jesus said, go. Right? In fact, Jesus spent more time on the street than he did in the synagogue. Go and minister. Last year, I asked you a question. I'm going to end with this. <clears throat> So I want to come back to that question. If Bethany Church were to totally disappear today, would anyone in the community notice? Anyone not attending, anyone not a part of this church, would anyone notice if we just cease to exist tomorrow? Or how long would it take them to say, oh, I thought there was a church there. If the answer is not many people would notice, that should haunt us. That should spur us forward. Right? Jesus, walking the streets one person at a time, made such a huge difference that 2,000 years later, we're still talking about it. We need to go out. We need to minister to our community. See, it's not my intention to discourage you or tell you things aren't going well. Actually, things are going great. God is blessed. And damn, things are happening. It's amazing. I wake up every morning and say, God, I can't believe you have given me the privilege to be a part of this. Great things are happening. God's at work, and we should celebrate that. What I do also want to communicate is now's not 
the time to rest. All right? Now's not the time to rest. Or admire our monument. We need to move with God. You know, I was going to, but I didn't get a chance to put it all together, and I wondered about time. I was going to put a glass, big glass jar here in front of you, and fill it with water, and then come up and say, this is what God has done, and pour kind of gravel and some dirt in, and stir it, right? And then I would go on and give you my presentation, right? And by the end of the service, do you know what would happen in that jar? Everything would settle down to the bottom. Don't let everything settle down. Right? Stir up. Reach out. Let's together roll up our sleeves and join God in what he's doing. God's not saying, oh, got another year passed for Bethany Church. That's wonderful. Let's all, you know, get out our lawn chairs and put up our feet and relax. No. There are people that don't know Jesus out there. There are hurting out there. And we need to follow God who is at work. We need to join him. And so I know most, most presentations, most reports end with respectfully submitted. Now, I don't want to disrespect you, right? But what I want to say is, will you join me in making a difference for Jesus? Keep stirring the jar. And let's watch what God's going to do in the year to come. All right. Stand as we close in prayer. <laughs> Lord God, to you be all the glory. You are wonderful. You are great and worthy of our praise. Thank you for your faithfulness and your goodness. And Lord, I pray a blessing upon these precious people. Would you encourage them? Would you minister to them? Oh God, would you, Father, work in their lives? And Lord God, help us to join hands and follow you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, God bless you. Don't forget, if you haven't gotten your picture taken, you know, if you want me to photobomb the picture, I can do